Welcome to the future. PBS Digital. The Raven. Both familiar and a mystery, it has long haunted our stories. Few creatures have so many meanings. From a trickster creator to a bird of death, from a wily scavenger to a member of the family, there is more to a raven than all our legends and stories. With brazen nerve and undeniable intelligence, the raven makes a living as a professional thief. Ravens profit from many unwitting partners. Resilient, regal, resourceful. To those who know them best, they're the most irresistible birds in the world. In the shadows of the old gray standing stones of England, there have risen many songs and stories of supernatural powers. Folk singer Maddie Pryor is an expert in such lore and in the dark depiction of ravens. Because they're seen so much around death and carnage, they have become in Northern Europe associated with death and they become birds of ill omen. And in medieval times, ravens earned their sinister reputation. It was the 14th century, and the bubonic plague was sweeping across Europe. One out of three people would die. Entire towns were stricken, with no one to bury the corpses in the all but empty streets. Enter the raven. Black birds gathering for the Black Death. To a raven, a dead human was just another carcass, a grim opportunity for a meal. The sight of a raven evoked such dread, it called up ancient pagan fears from long before the counting of centuries. I fear that feed black eyes, that fear The ancient Celts associated the raven with the Morrigan, the goddess of death and battle. And she could shapeshift, seemingly, into the raven. Or when they saw the raven, they thought the Morrigan was there. But on the other side of the world, in the rugged Pacific Northwest, the view was just the opposite. To many native tribes, Raven is a celebrated figure, half clown, half god, full of mischief, but the giver of great gifts. Yeah. 
His image is everywhere. His power reveals the true nature of things. Clever and resourceful, Raven invented the world. The mountains and rivers were all his idea. He even placed the sun in the sky. Before there was light, there was only twilight and darkness, and Raven got tired of looking for food in the dark. He heard of an old man in the sky who had a box that contained another box, and inside that, another and another, until inside the smallest one, there was light. A light that Raven was determined to steal. He tricked the old man into opening the box and flew off with the light in his beak. But the old man chased him, and in his hurry to escape, Raven threw the light into the sky where it hangs to this day. Raven is indeed a thief, but in his mischief, he brought a blessing to the whole world. Fitting descendants of the original trickster, wild ravens display the same curiosity and cunning. Conservation biologist John Marsliff has been studying these extraordinary birds for more than 10 years, trying to understand their amazingly complex behavior. For though ravens may not have invented the world, they often act as if they own it. Ravens are such a fascinating animal that once you start studying any of the corvids, you, you can't go back to studying something of lesser quality. It's just impossible. I think one of the things that, that strikes me and others who work on these animals is that when you catch something like a robin and you look at it, it's just a glossed over look. And there's really nothing going on inside of a robin's head, as far as I can tell. A raven, on the other hand, you hold a raven and you look at the raven and it's looking back at you. It has a pupil. It's dilating and contracting just like ours is. And that bird is obviously excited about you being that close to it. And you have a real tight connection with an animal like that, as opposed to one that's more of a blank slate. Ravens are at home almost everywhere, from desert to tundra. But wherever they live, nothing and no one escapes their attention. These young bald eagles are rehearsing part of their courting ritual. They're practicing a mid-air maneuver of locking talons. Their future success as partners depends on them getting this right. This is deadly serious for the young eagles, but for a raven, it's an irresistible chance to stir up trouble. But games can't go on forever. Ravens, too, must face the struggles of survival. Ravens are members of the crow family, along with jays, magpies, and crows themselves. But they're the biggest and most intelligent. They need to be intelligent to survive such different places, to work out how to find food, whatever the local conditions. Even those as harsh as the Wyoming winters, of Yellowstone National Park. Ravens survive by eating almost anything. They will eat fruits and insects, hunt small game, steal eggs. But if it's available, they prefer meat. 
For big game, they rely on large predators to do the work. They are often the companions of wolves and bears, but a cruel winter may be their best partner. And ravens aren't the only scavengers at a winter kill. Coyotes also live by their wits. Like ravens, they have to be both tough and flexible. The temperature here rarely gets above freezing for months on end, and strong winds make the cold more intense. With deep snow covering the ground, there's little food for the bison. Steam from Yellowstone's geysers offers some refuge from the bitter cold. But eventually, a failing bison must meet its fate. All the ravens need is patience. As fellow scavengers, the coyotes compete with the ravens for precious food. But in this case, the ravens need the coyotes' help. The coyotes, equipped with teeth and jaws, can tear open the tough frozen hide, which the ravens can't do on their own. For all scavengers, the chances of finding food are unpredictable. Ravens know how and when to take advantage of other animals and get their help in finding food. Such intelligence is crucial to their survival. But once a raven has eaten its fill, it looks around for something else to do. Its lively mind is always working, always curious. And another sign of raven intelligence, a glimpse into its sharp mind, is its ability to simply have a good time. Ravens love fresh snow. When one finds a slope, it just rolls over and over. Perhaps it's a snowy bird bath, but it appears to be enjoying itself, acting more like a puppy than a bird. But a raven doesn't go long without thinking of food. And one of the easiest ways to get something to eat is to steal it. A bald eagle could easily crush a raven in its talons. But the raven knows exactly what it's doing. The eagle can't attack it without releasing the food, and a raven never gives up. It's this sheer nerve, this character and intelligence that have earned raven a place in myth and legend everywhere in the world where it's found. One story comes from Scandinavia, a curious case of a recurring theft. Deep in midwinter, a fisherman sets his line through a hole in the ice, leaving it unattended in the cold.
But in the trees nearby, a raven sits watching and realizes exactly what the stick and line are for. Reeling in the line with beak and foot, the raven steals the catch day after day. The fisherman can scarcely believe his eyes when he finally discovers the identity of the thief. Probably one of the most difficult um, areas of biology to understand is, is the intelligence of other animals because we can't talk to them and ask them a question, ask them, are you thinking about this? And so devising experiments to really get at the question of whether animals are thinking about what they're doing are very tough. At the University of Vermont, zoologist Bernd Heinrich has devised an extraordinary experiment. He raises ravens from chicks to ensure that they have never seen this test before. Like the ice fishing case, there is food on the line and the raven pulls it up. but another string holds a stone. Will the raven have the insight to pull up only the food or get the stone just as often? The raven never gets it wrong. Increasing the level of difficulty, Heinrich crosses the lines. Now the raven must study the problem and then decide which string has the meat before pulling it up. And many ravens could solve that puzzle very easily. And at the first time, they saw this uh, potential problem. So that implies they had some foresight and to think, well, to get that food, I must pull it up a bit by bit, then I would be able to eat it. Interestingly, crows were not able to do that. To fully appreciate the complex nature of ravens, there's nothing like having one in the family. Rose Buck and her husband Lloyd are professional bird trainers, rearing all kinds of birds in their small farm in England. But the smartest, the most challenging, Rose's absolute favorite is Loki. He's always up to something. Hi, this is Loki, my raven. I've had him since he was three weeks old. He's bright, clever, very intelligent, mischievous. Sometimes he can be an absolute pain, but I wouldn't be without him. He's just great. You can stand up. Come on in. Come on. Good boy. There you go. I think ravens rank at the, certainly at the top of the bird intelligence scale. Uh, parrots probably are close to equal with ravens, but ravens have got to be right at the top. And with respect to other animals, I think ravens uh, outrank an awful lot of mammals. Uh, I would put them right on par with a lot of the canids, uh, the wolves and the coyotes, uh, dogs that we're perhaps more familiar with. One of his favorite things is to go for a drive in the car. One of the things he's learned is that as we drive up the track, 
and I get out of the car to open the gate, he's learnt to turn off the ignition in the car. And I just got it running just right. Get out, open the gate. Da -da -da -da. I think, oh no. Ravens learn partly by imitation, and Loki likes to do what he sees Rose do. But what Loki loves most of all is a chance to stretch his wings. I can't fly, obviously, and I can't run as fast as he can fly. So if I'm in the car and he's flying alongside, then he just really enjoys it because he can keep pace with me. By flying alongside her, Loki strengthens his bond with Rose. In the wild, ravens fly to impress each other. They perform spectacular flying displays, breathtaking aerobatics, all part of their courting behavior. Once they have found a partner, these synchronized flights reinforce existing bonds because when ravens do mate, they mate for life. And ravens can live for more than 40 years. Yet, more than anything, ravens seem to fly for sheer enjoyment. Ravens start nesting early in the year, often on a high cliff or somewhere inaccessible, out of the way of predators. But they're just as happy to nest on a man-made cliff, however elaborate. At Chester in northwest England, a pair of ravens has built their nest on the cathedral. Both parents bring food for the chicks. For the first few days, they feed them insects. And in eight days or so, the chicks increase their body weight 12 times. Now the parents need to find a lot of food. The raven pair claims a territory and defends it from other ravens. The territory must provide them with all their food. In a city like Chester, this will be anything from insects, birds' eggs, and scraps of food waste to small mammals like rats and mice. 
Not far from Chester, in North Wales, is a farm where ravens get a helping hand. The farmer puts out meat and dead chicks, but this food isn't actually intended for the ravens. It's meant for a rare bird whose numbers are threatened, the elegant red kite. Red kites are also scavengers, but they grab their food on the wing, swooping down to snatch what they can from the air. Even though scavengers eat meat from carcasses, they still have to be wary. A carcass may not really be dead. It might be a predator that is only injured and could still attack. The red kite solves this problem by staying in flight, ready to get away. But ravens feed very differently. They usually stay on the ground as they feed. They need to be more cautious. Ravens, as they approach carcasses, are always like torn in two directions. They approach it with one foot forward, and they're always ready to spring back the other way. It's just comical to watch them do this. And one of the things that's very stereotyped that they do is what we call a jumping jack maneuver. And what they do is they'll come up to a food, and they'll spring right up in the air as if they've been pinched on their toes. They just jump out of their skin, in the air, come back down, look around like, oh, I didn't mean to do that, and then come back into the food again and poke at it, and immediately they're just playing back and forth. You can, you can see they're being pulled in two directions. They want to eat, they got to have that food, and yet they, they can't because it's potentially dangerous to them. So they're always ready to spring back uh, in case it is indeed a live animal. Ravens have so much to learn that it takes four years to reach adulthood. Until then, young ravens stay together in large groups, often roosting in huge numbers in the tops of trees. But before sunset, they can't resist one last tumble in the air. These roosts sometimes number thousands of young birds. It's like a great gathering of teenagers. The Raven Roost is a really exciting place to be. There's a lot of interesting behavior and incredible flying skills that are displayed at the roost. And there are a couple things that interest us in particular. The first question of why they even roost together is, a, is again, a difficult one to answer. There are probably many reasons why ravens and other animals roost communally. But one of the most interesting ideas was that they actually roosted together to share information about where their food was. A young, inexperienced bird may not have eaten all day. And an animal that was unsuccessful could come back to the roost and pick the brain of animals that were successful that day. It's not clear how ravens share information, though this may happen on many levels. Certainly their vocalizations are as complex as any animal's. A simple way could be for a hungry raven to follow one that looks well fed. If it found food yesterday, it's likely to find it again today. When a raven returns to a carcass, there may be several birds already following it. Yet instead of keeping all the food for themselves, one or more ravens sometimes make a characteristic yell that seems to be calling even more of them to the kill.
This behavior has puzzled scientists. Why don't the first ravens to arrive keep silent and keep all the food for themselves? What do these ravens gain by calling others to join them? It appears to violate almost everything we know about animal behavior. Ravens must have some reason for doing this. Why, when you find a dead moose in the woods, would you ever want to recruit a hundred hungry ravens to eat it? You know, it doesn't make any sense. Darwin would have been flipping in his grave thinking about such an altruistic act. The answer is about competition, but not from the outside. This carcass is in the territory of a pair of adult breeding ravens, and established pairs can be very aggressive. They would savagely attack any youngster who invaded their turf. By forming a cooperative gang, the young ravens can outnumber the resident adults and help themselves to the carcass. About six weeks after they've hatched, the chicks from the cliff nest are ready to begin exploring the world. By trying out everything, they find out what is safe, what is interesting, and what is edible. just the beginning of what promises to be an interesting life. Winter. In the Austrian Alps, ravens show how quickly they can adapt to any new situation. Every afternoon at exactly the same hour, the ravens break the silence of these woods and gather in the trees. They know it's feeding time. Once the food appears, hordes of ravens seem to come from nowhere. As bold as you please, the ravens have come to steal. This food is put out for the captive wolf pack kept at a small zoo. Ravens rob the food from these wolves in the same way they'd steal from a wild pack. In the wild, ravens have long relied on wolves to hunt for them. There are even stories of ravens flying ahead of a hunting pack, leading them to a potential victim. The zoo also keeps wild boars, but to steal from them, the ravens have come up with a different technique. Boars, being pigs, tend to stand in their food, making it difficult to steal without being trampled underfoot. But ravens are easily smart enough to solve that problem. A sharp peck right between the shoulder blades, and the boar moves away. This is such fun. It's turned into a sport, boarback riding.
In the depths of winter in Ely, Minnesota, ravens are taking advantage of another animal, us. A place like this is raven heaven. When trash is left out for collection, the big black birds descend, helping themselves to choice leftovers. But even a trash raid requires some strategy. This raven knows it can carry four hot dogs at once, so it counts them out. But in this town, they don't even need to scavenge. It's a local tradition in Ely to feed the ravens. Whenever so many ravens come together, they have to have a social structure to communicate with each other. They use a complicated language of different sounds. Body language is also important. Between ravens, Different postures mean different things. A good example of the posturing involves the throat feathers and the head feathers. They'll pop up what we call ears. An adult territorial bird, these feathers will stick up right on the side of their head, and that's a very aggressive posture. They do that, their throat feathers come out. We call their pants go down as they let the feathers around their legs get really bushy. It makes them look big. It makes them look certainly more formidable. Ravens are quick, sociable, ingenious, intelligent, and they get the most out of the company of others. Birds, mammals, and especially humans, ravens have learned to use other creatures' skills to their own advantage. Ravens even do a little planning for the future. A dead hare is more than enough for one raven, and it can't eat it all at once, although it tries its best. The word ravenous says it all. But once it's eaten its fill, it's so heavy it can hardly take off. It carries the rest of the food away to hide. Now it must find good hiding places and remember where they are. Hiding food for future use, a behavior called caching, is a good way to protect against uncertain food supplies. That is, unless another raven is watching. When the rightful owner leaves, this raven just helps itself. There's no honor among these thieves. This caching behavior leads to other interesting relationships. On some golf courses, getting a birdie doesn't always mean what the golfer thinks. Some ravens have taken to stealing golf balls and hiding them. 
It's possible that they do this because golf balls look like eggs, which they also steal and cash. Or perhaps it's the old brand of Raven mischief. Wherever there are humans, there is usually a meal. And humans aren't hard to find. Our tracks are unmistakable. Ravens primarily use sight to find their food, and it's easier to spot a carcass on the road than among the trees. Where humans have tamed the wilderness, road kills have replaced the kills of the great predators. But while modern ravens have adapted to changing times, they never completely forget their old and honored relationships. Another example is their response to hunters. And it was quite clear in our studies that as soon as the hunting season started, the ravens abandoned their association with a small landfill and then immediately took off to follow hunters and find gut piles of uh, deer. And it started right on the day that, that hunting uh, season opened. In Scotland, ravens still follow human hunters, and they seem to know exactly when the deer season starts. A hunter with a gun is an even more efficient killing machine than a pack of wolves. And wherever there's death, there's something in it for a raven. Ravens are the only birds to fly towards the sound of a gunshot. The hunter removes the deer's innards, the grolic, right away so the venison won't spoil. He has no further use for this, so he just leaves it behind. But to the raven, the hunter has discarded the best part of the carcass. The guts and organs of an animal are the most nutritious, and being soft are the easiest parts to digest. Ravens have always followed humans. The relationship is an ancient one, and not always so benign. Because humans don't just kill animals, we kill each other. In the past, these hillsides have seen great human slaughter. But to a raven, a battlefield is just a well-laid feast, a human corpse the same as any other. Sinister, completely black with ghoulish eating habits, they've long held their reputation as birds of death. Yet there is one place in England where ravens hold a place of honor, the Tower of London. These birds are so important that a special tower guard tends to their every need. My name is David Cope. I am the Yeoman Ravenmaster here in the Tower of London. My job is to make sure that the ravens are healthy, well-fed and safe. These ravens are even under the protection of the crown. 
they have witnessed much of England's colorful past. From the Tower Green, ravens would have witnessed the executions of Anne Boleyn, Walter Raleigh, and Thomas More. But they didn't always enjoy this front row seat to history. In medieval London, ravens were so numerous, they became a public nuisance. When they interfered with the equipment of the Royal Observatory of the Tower, the Astronomer Royal pleaded with King Charles II to be rid of them once and for all. Oh no, said the King. Don't get rid of all the ravens because I've heard this legend. And it's based on the legend of Bran. Now Bran was a giant raven and he was in battle in Northern Ireland. He was mortally wounded and his few remaining followers brought him back to Anglesey in North Wales. And this is where he died in his wife's arms. Now she was called Branwyn, which means White Raven. And she then died of grief. Bran's remains were brought to London and were buried on the White Hill. And this legend grew up around him that as long as he laid undisturbed, all would be well with England. The legend still holds, as long as there are ravens at the Tower of London, England will not fall. Curiously, during the dark years of World War II, England's fortunes waned as the Tower ravens died and were not replaced. By the end of the war, only one raven stood between England and utter disaster. Today, they take no chances. Six ravens are always on duty, with two auxiliaries kept in reserve. Their wings are clipped, so they cannot fly away. They may be the guardians of a nation, but they still manage to get into trouble with the authorities. We have a story of one of our ravens, and he was called George. Now, George was a very lonesome bird and was always planning the great escape. Very often to be seen going up the underpass to catch an underground train with his spotted handkerchief over his wing. Now, George had found the way to escape was to go up the fire escape by the uh, doctor's house. And on the way, he would have a snack. Television aerials, love them. Five aerials in one week. Enough was enough. George had to go. Technically, these ravens are privates in the British Army, and there's just one way to dismiss a soldier. He was given a dishonorable discharge and was sent to the Welsh Mountain Zoo. Now, George is possibly the only private in the British Army ever to be given his dishonorable discharge by a field marshal. Ravens have amazingly powerful characteristics and they have this wonderfully knowing eye that asks to be written about or write songs about to make them human because it's there. They are able to live with humans. They can exploit us and yet they can be found in the forest's most remote areas as well. So the ability to contrast an animal that's living with humans versus living as far away from humans as it can get is really fascinating. So it's one of these bad addictions. Once you get into them, you can't get out of them. They're, they're just continually more interesting. Loki could live for another 30 to 40 years, so we're planning to grow old together. Every day with Loki is a new experience. I couldn't imagine being without him. From a trickster creator to a bird of death, from a wily scavenger to a member of the family, there is more to a raven than all our legends and stories. Yet we will never know ravens completely. They will always be birds of mystery, creatures of endless fascination, a reflection of nature's many meanings. To learn more about what you've seen on this nature program, visit PBS online at pbs.org or America Online keyword PBS.